Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we'll talk about a new chapter in Python, Files and Exception Handling. By the end of this chapter, you'll be able to achieve the following objectives, inshallah. Let's start talking about part 1 of this chapter, which is files. So, why do we need files anyway? Since the data stored in a program are temporarily, as you know, so they are lost when the program terminates. For this reason, in order to save them, we use files. Files allow you to store your data on the disk or other permanent storage, like CD. There are many types of files, text, CSV, binary, and so on. A file is a sequence of characters stored on a disk drive. Files have a name and a file extension. Before start writing or reading from a file, you should open it and specify the required mode. If you want to read, write, or update the file. So, to open a file, use the open function. This function takes two arguments, file name and the access mode. So, in this example, any file equals open data, comma, r. This instruction will open the file called data, a reading mode, because we are using r. r returns the file object called any file. In addition to open, we have the close. So after opening your file, you need eventually to close it using close function. Here are the different accessing modes we have in Python. R is used for reading from a file. If we add plus to the R, it will be R plus. This allows us to open a file for reading and writing at the same time. Now, the second accessing mode is W for write. We use this in order to write to our file. Now, if the file was not created, this will create it for you. However, if you have an existing file, the old value will be erased. Your old file will be overwritten. Now, if we use W+, this allow us to read and write from the file. A. Append to the existing file content. Now, if the file exists, the new values will be added to the end of your file. However, if it does not exist, Python will create the file for you. We have also a plus, which will be used for appending and reading at the same time. The last access mode is B to open a binary file. The default access mode is R. How to read files in Python? We start by how to read from a text file. To read a text file in Python, we must open the file in reading mode as we said in the previous slides. Then, using the read method. The read method will return the entire content of the file into a specified string variable. Here, the string variable in this example is data. Also, the read method allows us to read a specified number of characters from a file and return them as a string. For example, if read 5 it will return 5 characters from your file. Keep in mind that Python remembers where the file last read by using the file pointer or bookmark. For example, you want to read the test file. First, open the file. File 2 equals open test file, comma, r. We open it for reading. Then, print file 2.read. You got the following output. Don't forget. Read, read the whole file. We want to call the seek function. This function is used to change the position of the file handler to a given specific position. In this case, we are giving it zero. So we will return back to the beginning of our file. Why we need it? Because sometimes we want to change the file handle position ourselves. Now, print file 2.read5, the output here will be hello, because we will start reading from the beginning of the file, counting 5 characters. In this case, it will be hello. Then, when we print read10, the output will be the white space, then guys, and how. We will continue reading from where we stopped, I mean after hello because Python just picks up where it left off unless we use seek function to change the file pointer. 
the read line method reads one entire line from the file and return a string. If a specified n is passed to this method, then it will read n characters from the current line. However, it does not read more than one line, even if n exceeds the length of the line. We will see some examples in the next slide. Let's explain read line through those examples. Back to the same file, we have two lines. Hello guys and how are you? Now, the first time we call read line, it will read the first line, which is hello guys, as you can see. The second time we call read line, it will continue reading, so it will read the second line. Now we are calling seek to return our pointer to the beginning of the file. Then, we will read the line, and this time we will give it 5, meaning we will read the first 5 characters from the beginning of the file. In this case, we will be reading hello. Then, again we are calling seek to return to the beginning of the file. Then, when we call read line with 20, in this case 20 is bigger than the length of the first line, because the length of the first line is 10. So, as we said, it will stop at the end of the first line in this case. So, it will print hello guys. It will not print something from the second line. Now, we will call seek again to return to the beginning of the file. Again, we will call read line with 15, which is bigger than the length of the first line. It will do the same thing. It will print until the end of the line. Hello guys. Let's move to another method which is read lines. Read lines method reads until EOF end of file and returns a list containing the lines. For example, print if two dot read lines, the output will be a list containing hello guys as the first item, then how are you as second item. It's also possible to loop through a text file as follows, going each line at one iteration. Now we are done talking about reading from file. Let's start talking about writing to file. To write in a text file, first of all, we will open the text file in writing mode using the axis mode W. Then use the write method to write a single string to a text file in a single line, as you can see here. Don't forget at the end, to close your file. In the previous examples, we had the two sentences at the same line. How to split them in different lines? Simply, we will use the symbol backslash n. Similarly, to read lines that will read different lines at the same time, we have write lines method. This method writes a sequence of strings to the file. The sequence can be any iterable object producing strings, typically a list of strings. Now you can see in this example, we have a list L that contains two strings. Note that your strings must be delimited with backslash N for proper format. Now let's see this example. First, we will open the file and we'll save this file into an object called target. Then we are creating two lines. Two strings line 1 equals good morning then line 2 equals how are you then we are using the write function to print to print each line separately separated with backslash n then we are using write lines to print the list at the end we are closing our file now you can see in the output that good morning is printed because we are using write then we have the backslash n, then we are printing how are you, then we are going to the next line using the backslash n. However, when we use the right lines without the backslash n, we, you can see the output all as the same line. If we want to add content at the end of the file, we use the a mode to open a file for appending. For example, as you can see here, we are creating a list of fruits in which we have the different strings orange banana and apple then we are opening our file with a plus mode so this will be for appending and reading at the same time 
Then we are using the predefined method write lines in order to write my list, which is fruits. This will append the list of fruits at the end of, of my file. Don't forget that we are using the same predefined file, which has good morning and how are you. Then we are calling the seek function to go to at the beginning of my file. Then we are looping, iterating to print how well my file looks like. Then at the end, we are closing the file. You will have as output, good morning in one line, then how are you? Then good morning, how are you? Then we are appending orange, banana, and apple at the end of the file. Now let's talk further about other related attributes. The name, it will return the name of the file. Closed, it will return true if the file was closed, false otherwise. The mode, it will return the access mode. It can be R, W, A, M, B, as we have studied at the beginning of this chapter. Now let's see the example. In this example, we have with keyword. Why do we need with? Using with the statement, you get better syntax and exception handling. The with statement simplifies exception handling by encapsulating common preparations and cleanup tasks. In addition, it will automatically close the file. Now, back to our example. We are opening our file and then we are printing the name of the file. Then we are printing the access mode. In this case, the access mode is R because this is the default access mode. When we don't specify any access mode, it will be R by default. At the end, we are checking if the file was closed or not. It is closed already, even though we did not close the file. All thanks to the with statement. It will close it for you. Now let's talk further about other related methods. Readable. It will return true if the file was opened for reading. This is depending on the access mode that you chose. Writable is similar to readable. It will return true if the file was opened for writing. Again, depending on the access mode that you chose. Seek function, we talked about it. It will take the current position at the specified offset that you give. If you did not give any number, the default will be zero. So seek automatically will take you to the beginning of the file. Truncate, this is a new function that we will talk about. This will cut your file to the size that you specify. We'll, we'll, we'll define this in the next example. Now you can see in this example we are opening the file using which access mode? W+. So this will allow us to read and write at the same time. Then we are writing one statement split it using backslash n in two different lines. Then we are calling the function seek to return to the beginning of the file. Then we are printing to the output screen the content of my file. So you can see here we are printing, we are learning Python two times. Then we are calling the function readable and writable to check if the, if the file is readable and if the file is writable. Both will print it true, as you can see. Because we used which access mode? We used W+. So we are reading and writing at the same time. Then we are calling the function truncate and giving it size 10. This will cut my file to the first 10 characters. So you can see here in the output we are having we are then LEA, which is the first 10 characters. Then we are calling the seek to return to the beginning of the file. Then we are printing the content of my file, which became to the first 10 characters, which is the last line of the output file. Now read this exercise and try to do it yourself. Let's move to another type of files, the CSV file. A CSV stands for comma separated values file. It allows data to be saved in a tabular structure with a CSV extension. Files of CSV will open into Excel and nearly all databases have a tool to allow import 
and export from and to CSV files. The standard format is defined by rows and columns. Each row is terminated by a new line. And within the row, each column is separated by a separator symbol. Typically, a comma is used. However, we could use other symbols like semicolon or any other symbol. So, for example, the below table. How to represent it using CSV files? As you can see here, it will be different rows. Each row will be terminated by a new line symbol. You don't see it here. Then, each column will be separated by a comma. Python provides a CSV module to handle CSV files. This module provides classes for reading and writing tabular information in CSV file format. It has several functions and classes available for reading and writing. They include CSV reader function, CSV writer function, CSV dictionary writer class, and finally, CSV dictionary reader class. We'll, to we'll talk in details about those functions and classes in the coming slides, inshallah. In order to read from a CSV file, we need to use csv.reader method. However, before that, we need to open our file first. And don't forget to import CSV module. You can see in the below example, an example of CSV file. You will find the code of reading from this file in the next slide. Here is the code for reading the file that we talked about in the previous slide. We'll start by importing CSV. Then we'll open the file normally using open. And we'll give, it, we'll give to it the access mode R because we want to read only. Then we'll use the method csv.reader and we'll pass to it the object file. This method will return a list of rows in which each row is a list of strings containing the data found by removing the delimiter. The first row, it will be the column header. We will deal with it in a special way. In this example, we are trying to read the same file but we are using different method. Instead of using csv.reader, we will use csv.dictionaryreader. csv.dictionaryreader it will return a list of rows in which each row is a dictionary. It will return an ordered dictionary. In this example, we are converting the ordered dictionary into normal dictionary. But what is an ordered dictionary? An ordered dictionary is a dictionary subclass that remembers the order that keys were first inserted. The only difference between dictionary and ordered dictionary is that ordered dictionary preserves the order in which the keys are inserted unlike the normal dictionary. The good news is that the, no, the new versions from Python returns a normal dictionary, not the ordered one. So you don't need to convert it into normal dictionary. We talked about reading from CSV file. Let's talk now about writing to CSV file. In order to write to CSV file, first, of course, you need to import CSV module. Then open your file in writing mode. Then, call the method csv.writer that will return an object suitable for writing. We call it a writer object. Using this object, we could call either write row to, to write one row at a time or write rows that will write different rows at the same time. Now, you can see in this example, we are importing CSV, then we are defining our data, which is a list of lists of strings. Then we open our file in writing mode. Then we call the method csv.writer that will return our writer object, which is in this case, we are naming it writer object. Then using this object, we call the method write rows. We want to write all of our data in one time, in one shot. Then we are closing our file. Here we have two examples. The first one using write row. So in this case, we are writing a single row at a time. In order to optimize this, we could use write row with a for loop. Now the second example, we are writing the whole thing, the whole file using one line, which is write rows. You need to know that both methods are used depending on what you want to do. 
Similarly to a dictionary reader, we have dictionary writer, in which we can write a dictionary to a CSV file. Now you can see in this example, we imported CSV first, then we opened our file in writing mode, as usual. Then we are defining the field names, which is our column names. In this case, we have a list of column names, first name, second name, and grade. Then we are calling dictionary writer. We give to it my file, which is the file object. Then we are passing to it our field names, which is in my list field n. Then we are calling the function write header. This will write our field names at the beginning of the file. This will write first name, comma, second name, and then grade. Finally, we will call write row. This will write a row as a dictionary. So we'll pass to it a dictionary of the column name and the value. This will write the value only because the header name was written using writer header. Don't forget to close your file. The following output file will be generated. Now this is another example for using Dictionary Writer. In this case, we are importing CSV again, opening the file in writing mode, then we are defining our field names, our column headers, which is in this case player name and rating. Then we are using Dictionary Writer. We are passing to it the file object, which is my file, plus the field names. Now we are writing the headers, the column headers using the write header method. Then, instead of using write row several times, in this case we are, we are using write rows and we pass to it a list of dictionaries. Don't forget to close your file. At the end of the day, the following output file will be generated. That's all for today. Thank you for listening and stay safe.